In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a small kitchen knife. The first thing you'll need is some high carbon steel. The steel I use is 1095 due to its easy heat treatment. This steel is 2 inches wide and an eighth inch thick, perfect for a small kitchen knife. So I grabbed a template I made a while ago. It's a perfect shape for stabbing and chopping. Here I'm just tracing the shape of the template over the piece of steel we chose earlier with the sharpie. I'm definitely happy with the shape and it's time to move on to the next step of rough cutting it on the metal cutting bandsaw. And always remember, safety first. Shop tip. Just remember where your fingers are and where they're going at all times when cutting on a metal cutting bandsaw. We all want to be able to count to 10 for many years to come. When it comes to a metal cutting bandsaw, just take it slow with steady pressure and the metal should cut pretty easily. You don't have to be a hero and cut the outline in one go. Here I make a bunch of relief cuts and they just pop off easily. Now that it's roughly cut, we can move over to the bell grinder to clean up the shape. Here I'm using a 36 grit belt which hogs off material quickly. I start by grinding slow, making sure I don't go past the sharpie outline. And always remember, you can use any part of the grinder to help shape your knife. Always have a cup of water nearby to keep the blade cool. Remember, friction causes heat and heat makes blisters. I'm switching out the grinder from a standard grinding plate to a small wheel set. You'll see what it does in a second. Down goes Frazier! Down goes Frazier! Here I'm using one of the wheels from my small wheel set. I'm going to use it to grind off the rough points and use it to shape a more detailed and ergonomic handle. I gotta say, that feels pretty good for stabbing and chopping. Now it's time to use a finer grit sandpaper. I think this is 120. And then finalize the profile. Ooh, that's some nice profile. After that, I'd like to give the blade a quick sanding, just to get a sense of what the blade will eventually look like. Now it's time to mark and make the main bevel on the blade. First I use a sharpie and blacken where the edge of the blade will be. This is so during the grinding I don't grind the edge too thin and risk warping the blade. Next I use an eighth inch bit to mark where the middle of the blade is. This is so during the grinding I don't grind the edge too thin and risk warping the blade. Now it's time to grind the main bevel. For this I use the bevel grinder I made in a previous video. I use blue dicum on the blade and then use calipers to mark how high the main bevel will go. Let's turn the grinder on and start grinding. When it comes to grinding a bevel on a knife, always remember slow and steady wins the race. I don't show it here, but anytime the knife heats up, I dunk it in water to cool it down. Looks good, now just do the same thing on the other side of the blade and you're good to go. Now it's time to mark where the pins are going to go on the handle. There's no real science here, I just kind of put them where I think they'll look good. For the pins, I'm using some basic 8th inch brass I got from a big box store. Now it's time to use the good old center punch. When drilling a knife blank, it may not look it, but make sure you have it securely clamped down, so it doesn't get caught in the machine and chop off a finger or two. So far so good, next up is to grab the forge. I have a small one burner propane forge that does the trick for most of my knives. Again. We're dealing with fire here, so please use all proper safety gear. Hey, what do you know? That rhymed. 
Once the forge is up to temperature, I put the blade in for a few minutes to get it cherry red and then take it out of the forge to let it naturally cool down so it's warm to the touch. This step is called normalizing the blade. Don't ask me, ask a scientist. Yes, science! I did this outside, so once it was ready, I let it rest on a concrete slab for about 15 to 20 minutes. Once it was warm to the touch, it was back into the forge until it was cherry red. And just remember to keep moving the blade so you don't burn the tip. I like turtles! Once it's ready, I quickly quench the blade in corn oil, and then check the hardness of the metal by running a file over it. If heat treated properly, the file should skate over the blade and not bite into the steel. Now the blade is super brittle. For the next step, we need to temper the blade. That means we'll soften the metal just enough so it isn't super brittle, but can hold an edge nicely. To do this, we can use the oven you have at home. For tempering 1095 steel, I like to heat the blade to 400 degrees for 2 hours. Two hours later. Nice. Why the hell is a camera in the oven? I'll do it! When it's done, if the blade has a straw color to it, you've tempered it correctly. And now it's time to grab a whole bunch of sandpaper. To help with sanding, I use a small piece of plywood I cut out using the bandsaw as a sanding block. So this is definitely not a fast or fun step of the knife making process, so grab some glass cleaner and some paper towels and get sanding. Because I'm going for a stonewash look for this blade, I'm starting with 100 grit and stopping at 220. There is a process on how to properly sand a knife, and I'll leave that down in the description below. Approximately 10 hours later. I think I'm done. It's good. Be prepared. This process is going to take a lot of elbow grease and even more sandpaper. <sighs> now that that's done, the next step is to wash the blade with some rubbing alcohol and get rid of all the oil and dirt from it because we're going to be dipping it in ferric acid to give it a nice patina look, but we want it to be nice and even because if there's dirt or oil on here, it's going to give it a splotchy look. So let's put some gloves on and get washing. Just a quick rinse of rubbing alcohol does the trick to make the blade nice and clean. So in this PVC tube is ferric chloride. Normally ferric chloride is used to etch motherboards and computer components, but for us we're going to use it to put a nice patina on the blade and then stonewash it to make it look cool. So if you try this technique, just make sure you use all safety precautions. Eye protection, respirator, the whole nine yards. And one more thing, when you use ferric chloride and you're dipping metal on it, just make sure you have ammonia-based window cleaner nearby. This stuff neutralizes the acid and makes the blade safe to handle later on. Let's get dipping. Here's a final look at the blade before it goes in the ferric chloride. I'll leave it in for about two or so minutes before taking it out. Like I said, the glass cleaner will neutralize the acid and make it safe to touch once you wipe everything off. As you can see, the ferric chloride really did its job. So that patina came out perfect. So the next thing to do is actually stonewash the blade. And for that, we're keeping it super simple. I went outside and grabbed a ton of little rocks from the actual parking lot to my shop. I have no idea what kind of rocks these are. I grabbed enough rocks to fill an old water bottle about three quarters of the way full. Once the water bottle is full of rocks, take the blade, put it in the water bottle, make sure you cover it with your hand, and shake it up a bunch. Let's give it a shot. Wow, 
Glad I didn't make this video 3D, huh? Now that that's all shaken, let's see how the blade looks. Oh yeah, so the stone washing on a blade makes it look really cool. But not as cool as my stone wash jeans in 1992. Now that the stone washing is done, the next step is to put a handle on the knife. So I ended up choosing these dyed burl scales that were being sold as gun handles. They should look pretty awesome when we're done. Now let's hot glue the pieces together. Pew, 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 pew. We do this so we can draw the profile of the blade on one side, cut a rough shape into both of them, and then glue them onto the blade. Keep watching, you'll see what I'm talking about. Here I clamp the blade on the pieces of wood as a makeshift jig to drill where the pins are gonna go. I like doing this because it almost guarantees everything's gonna line up. Once that's done, I like to put everything together just to make sure everything was drilled properly and everything fits together. Now let's rough cut the shape of the tang into the wood on the bandsaw. I make sure to cut enough of the wood off to save time on the bell grinder, but leave enough just in case I make any mistakes. See? Not too much, not too little. On to the next step. Now I'm going to use some CA glue to fill in some tiny holes in the wood. This gives the wood a little bit more strength during everyday use. Next I use a pallet wood shot glass made by YouTube's Paul Jackman to use as a curve on the front of the handles. Now it's time to grind it down and make it nice and round. Another tip, when using a belt grinder on hardwoods, turn the speed way down so the wood doesn't burn. Now we have the handle nice and round, but it's got a hard edge on it. Time to use a disc sander and sand down the edge so we have nice bevels. Here I set the angle on the disc sander so I can make 45 degree bevels on each side of the handle. Now that definitely looks a lot better with the bevels. I ended up sanding the hard edges down to give it a more organic look. You'll see what I'm talking about at the end of the video. Next step is the glue up. I like to lay everything out beforehand when I'm working, because I'm using 5 minute epoxy, I won't have much time to work in case I screw something up. First I combine the two part epoxy and make sure that it's well mixed. Next is spreading the epoxy on one of the handle pieces and placing it flat on the work area. Then I apply an even coat of epoxy to each pin and place it in the drill holes on the handle. Then I cover the second piece of the handle evenly in epoxy and then put it all together. Make sure you use at least three clamps to secure it up nice and tight. Here I use a q-tip covered in rubbing alcohol to wipe away any excess epoxy that may have squeezed out on the blade while clamping. Remember when using glue and clamps not to tighten too much and have the epoxy ooze out. You want it to do its job and hold everything together. So the epoxy has been drying for about three hours now so it's nice and hard. So the next step is to take off all the clamps and head over to the sander to start shaping the handle. Now I take off all the clamps and do a final inspection to make sure everything is good to go. Here I use my bandsaw to cut off the excess pins to save time grinding. Now it's time to shape the handle. I use a 120 grit belt here to sand down all the hard angles that were made in the previous sanding session. During this step, you can really get creative as far as shaping goes. I'm keeping it pretty basic as this is going to be a daily use kitchen knife. I like to keep checking and feeling how the knife feels in my hand so I don't take off too much material at any point. It's getting close. Time to round off all these hard edges. As you can see here, I really start to round off all the hard edges by rolling the knife around the sanding belts. Time to do a final hand test. It feels good and is ready for some final hand sanding. So here's a tip I learned when I first started knife making. What you'll need is to cut a piece of sandpaper into 1 inch strips. Then get a roll of 1 inch postal tape. 
It's reinforced with fiberglass so it's super tough. Next cut the tape into pieces slightly longer than the sandpaper. Then apply the tape to the back end of the sandpaper. Now the sandpaper is super tough and you can use it to conform around the knife handle to easily round off any areas that still might need some sanding. Keep checking how the handle feels. For this handle, I sanded up to 320 grit and felt it was ready for sharpening. Mmm, that's a smooth handle. So there are many options for sharpening a knife. For me, I like the speed and results of this inexpensive wet-dry sharpener. Here I tightened the blade in the clamp and went for a 20 degree secondary bevel. It's a good overall angle for a kitchen knife. The blade only requires a few passes on each side to form a nice burr. A great thing about a wet sharpener is that you never overheat the blade and lose the temper. Looks like we just beveled up, am I right? No? Anyone? And now I move to the other side of the machine and use the leather wheel with honing compound to strop the knife and make it scary sharp. And now for the final step. I love to use this True Oil gunstock finish for all my knife handles. It gives off a nice sheen while protecting the wood. I highly recommend it. Now, let's just enjoy the next few shots without my nasally voice ruining the moment. So here it is, a small kitchen knife made out of 1095 steel. I really wish I didn't wear black, you can't even see the blade. So I really love the way the acid and stone wash look came out on this blade. I think it looks pretty badass. With that being said, I made a ton of crappy knives before I started making knives like this that I was actually happy to hold in my hand. So with this video, the goal was to make a video that I wish I saw when I first started to get into knife making. It would have made the process a whole lot easier. So I really hope you learned a thing or two with this video. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the little bell notification every time you want to get notified when I drop a new video. Also, I'm on Patreon, so if you dig what I'm doing and want to support me, all the information will be down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Ooh, that's tart.